Ever since I brought the Ford Bronco home, I've been patiently waiting for somebody to come out with a good mounting solution for an air compressor that's gonna keep things nice and clean and tucked away. And I think I've finally found the perfect solution that's gonna allow us to mount this ARV compressor under the hood. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you the whole mounting system. We'll talk about the compressor and then we'll get it installed and see how it looks. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and thanks for joining me in the garage today. I am very excited to finally be installing an air compressor mounting solution under the hood. It's gonna prevent me from having to carry the big portable compressor that I've been using for the last several months. You know, now that the Bronco has been out on the market for a while, companies are starting to develop some really cool, innovative designs for mounting the equipment that we like to take with us, and Grim Off-Road has come up with a really cool mounting kit for this dual ARB compressor that we're gonna put under the hood. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you all the equipment we're gonna be using. I'll talk a little bit about the compressor. I'll show you where under the hood it's gonna go. Then we will put it all together and see how it works. I think this is gonna be a really cool solution. So let's take a look at what we got here on the table. So I'm starting out, I have the Grim Off-Road mounting kit. And so here on the right side of the table, your left side of the table is where uh, everything we get. So we got two big mounting plates that are going to allow us to mount the compressor vertically, which will be cool. There's a couple of little small bars here that are going to mount to the fender. We've got a wire loom here that is going to simplify the install because sometimes with the ARB compressor, things can get a little complicated. They supply a very easy wire loom. We've got a couple air compressor fittings. We've got a little bushing. We've got a couple bolts and nuts and washers here, and that's pretty much all we're gonna need, and just some basic tools to get this installed. Now, I've got the dual ARB compressor, which I have been using for a long time. This thing is tried and true and is served me very well over the years. Got some mounting hardware, which we will be using to mount up to the Grim Off-Road Kit. A couple filters. It comes with our switch, which we will put in a very nice, convenient place because they've made it super simple to do that. We've got the wire loom that's gonna go straight to the battery from the compressor. And then this is the wire loom that can be a little daunting and thankfully we don't need to use any of this. Now, if you're gonna be setting up front and rear air lockers, then you're gonna have to sort this out, but we don't have to do that because the Bronco already has front and rear lockers, so we're good to go. And then I have the uh, air compressor kit, which is gonna give us a chuck and a hose and all that good stuff. It's all gonna come together in a nice clean package. Now, let me show you under the hood in the Bronco where we're gonna install this. So just yesterday I was tinkering on my 74 Cherokee, which the engine bay looks a whole lot different than the Bronco's engine bay. So things were a lot simpler back then. This is, uh, this is chaotic. Uh, there's a lot going on in this engine bay. And so finding a place to put this air compressor probably was not any easy task, but they really did come up with a good solution. I think it's gonna work. So over here is the PCM. This is the power control module. This is the brains of the engine. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna unplug this, uh, unmount this, and then this will mount vertically on the air compressor and then everything should tuck back in here in this spot nice and clean and then we will have a little mount up here with the switch and so when we pull off uh, at the end of the day on the trail to air up our tires pop the hood plug it in hit the switch and we should have air to air up our tires that's the plan so first things first let's get that all put together and then we will remove this and get it installed should be cool I don't ever want to mess with any of that stuff, that's for sure. So the first thing we're going to do is prep the compressor and make it ready to mount up to the little mounting kit. And so I'm going to pull these little air filter plugs off here. And these are just little air filters that come with the ARB compressor. And it's just screw on there like that. And there are two of them. You know, it's funny, I don't think I've ever replaced one of these. I don't know if that's something that needs to be replaced from time to time. Inside here is a little tiny manifold and there is deep in here is a 10 millimeter nut that we need to loosen up. And so a couple turns on that guy and what that's gonna allow us to do is rotate this little manifold in here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the plug off and hopefully, okay, so that plugs off there. Now I'm gonna rotate this manifold 
15 degrees. Oh, that was super easy. So rotate that manifold 15 degrees. So, and then we'll install this little fitting into here. But I'm, first, I'm going to put some Teflon tape on there. Now you can use pipe thread sealer or Teflon tape, whichever your preference is. I just happen to have Teflon tape. And one little uh, key thing to note here, and I used to goof this up all the time, is when you are putting on Teflon tape, you wanna go clockwise as the threads are facing you. If you go the other way, once you start to screw this in, it, the Teflon will, tape will start to bind because that little tab is sticking out and it wants to go against the threads. So just make sure that you're going clockwise around and we're going to put a couple loops on here just like that and just break that off there and then you know what before I put this in here it looks like it's going to align properly I'm going to tighten that manifold and when you tighten this you don't want to go crazy tight on there I think it recommends in the instructions seven foot pounds I'm just going to hand tighten it Nice and snug. But last thing we want to do is strip anything out. That's probably good right there. So we'll screw that guy on there. And so I'm just going to give this a good turn all the way like that because we want it facing this way. So that should, that should work well. All right, so far so good. And I've uh, set the compressor aside and now I have grabbed the bracket that has the brass fitting on it and I've already wrapped some Teflon tape on this little hose fitting. So with this air fitting, just like the last one, there's a tapered end and a standard end. And so the standard end is gonna go right in there. Screw that guy in there. And I've grabbed a 9 16th and a one inch, and we're just gonna tighten this guy up. Just like that. I don't know about you guys, but I love tinkering in the garage with projects like this, especially, especially when they're going so smoothly. Um, but it's just, I don't know, it's kind of therapeutic just being in here and not thinking about anything except what you know my hands are doing and what the wrench is doing and what I need to do on the next step. I just I just enjoy being in the garage doing stuff like this. So here we go. I think that's good to go. All right, now we're grabbing the other bracket and we're going to mount this up to the compressor. But you know it's just fascinating to take a look at this. Somebody had to figure out you know all the right bends, the holes, tabs, and everything to make this all fit. It's pretty cool. All right, we're going to throw the compressor upside down. And then this guy, make sure I've got my orientation right. Yeah, that should be right. It goes there. And then we're gonna use the hardware that came with the ARB compressor and bolt that up using all four of these bolts. Once I get two of these in here, it should hold itself. There we go. I'm just getting these all hand tight. And then, you know, I could use my little DeWalt gun to tighten these down, but I'm not. I'm gonna just do this by hand just because I don't wanna strip anything out. So these don't need to be crazy tight, but good and firm. And, and I love this wrench that pivots like this because it allows you to do this very easily. And then you can flip it over and tighten it down and get some good torque on there. It's just a handy piece of gear. I like this, this wrench a lot, actually. All right, I think those are pretty good. All right, that's ready to go. Okay, we've got both brackets laid on the table next to each other, and now we're gonna use our stainless steel braided hose and attach both the air fittings together. Get that on there. Good and tight, 9 sixteenths. Good and snug. And then attach the other side of our hose to the other fitting on the compressor. Just hand tighten that. Goes on there pretty good. And just a couple turns with the 9 sixteenths. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now I've grabbed all the carriage bolts and washers and locking nuts that came with the Grim Off-Road Kit. And so what we're gonna do is kind of sandwich this together and then bolt this up. And if you're not familiar with what a carriage bolt is, it has like this mushroom top with this square body underneath side, which allows it to lock in. So then all you have to do is just put the washer and the nut on the bottom and you don't have to tighten it with two wrenches. It makes it pretty easy to, to use. And so 
This, this is coming together pretty good, guys. Just like that. And we're just putting all these in loosely. Once we get them all lined up, then we'll go ahead and tighten everything down. All right, so we installed a total of five of those carriage bolts, and here is where having a ratcheting wrench like this is really gonna be helpful because these are kind of tight to get uh, a socket into, and this is, uh, yeah, you definitely want a ratcheting wrench like this to be able to do this. All right, that is a nice, solid, stout package right there, a good casing for the compressor. Now, when we pull the PCM out of the Bronco, that's actually gonna mount right here on the top. But before that, the directions say that we need to wire up the switch. And again, they gave us this nice wire loom with three wires on the back of the switch. There's one side that has two tabs and one side that has three tabs. And so we're gonna plug into the side that has three tabs and it's black, red, purple. And those just plug right into there. Black, red, and purple. Super easy. All right, with the button all wired up, they've created this perfect little block right here where the switch is gonna go. So we're gonna feed the wire through and push that in there and it should click snap right into place. Just like that, perfect. All right, now I took one quick look at the instructions before I went to go pull the PCM out and it does recommend to install the hose coupling on here first before we mount the PCM on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that really quick. And reminder, this came in the ARB hose kit. So it's a nice little coupling and this allows us to plug the hose directly in here. There are some other things you could use. You can go down to some hardware stores and pick them up, but this just makes it super easy. Plus that the hose is supplied. So just gonna install that. I did put some Teflon tape on there. Get this on there nice and tight. Perfect. All right, let's go pull that PCM off. All right, now time to remove the PCM. So there are three eight millimeter bolts. One is holding this ground wire on, so we will pull that off. And then there are two, let's take that ground wire off there, and then there are two holding this bracket on there. go. All right, and this should slide out. There we go. All right, and now we need to unplug the PCM. And so there's just this lever, and we're just going to flip this lever, and hopefully this will unplug nice and easy here. There's probably a trick to this, and I just don't know what it is. a little bit. Ta-da! All right, that's off there. All right, so you got to give it a good little force. I just, I was being delicate. I didn't want to break anything. There's a couple of little Christmas tree clips here. I'm just going to disconnect as well just to make this all come apart. And I think there's one holding this whole thing on. I think I can just pull up. Maybe not. Let's see if I can get in there and get it. Okay, I've been fighting with this, what I thought was a plastic clip that goes underneath. And it actually is like a little plastic screw. So I think if I just get under here and unscrew it, I'll be good to go. Yay! There we go. Okay, that's all it took. Just that screw that was holding on the bottom here. So now what we need to do is actually take the PCM off of this bracket and attach it to our new bracket and then we can install everything and uh, we're gonna have a compressor here soon guys. All right, there are just three 10 millimeter nuts holding the PCM on here. Just it right off. And then I'm gonna pull this guy off and switch this over and it's gonna go on our mount just like this. Now there are four mounting spots and we're going to use those carriage bolts once again and it does say that we can tighten down the three 
carriage bolts here, but the one up top we're going to leave loose. And that is because that one of those brackets, we got those two small brackets, that needs to attach here. So all right, this one you need small fingers for. There we go. All right, and these are the three bolts here that we're gonna go ahead and tighten down. And then the one that's up here, we will leave, we will leave loose. So I'm gonna tighten these guys down. Ah, and I just realized something. So, you see how this nut and bolt are flush, this one are flush, so is this one, but this one's long. I'm thinking because this is the longer one, this one needs to go up here because it's got to attach to the other bracket. So I'm going to make that swap here real quick. All right, we'll see if I'm right. Okay, I was right uh, about that longer bolt, but it says it in the instructions. So if I just would have read the instructions, I would have found it. Now, the problem is, is I need one of the nuts that I dropped on the floor. Ah, there it is. Gotcha. Okay, so now we have two nuts left. We got this dampening bushing that we need to install, and we got these two little brackets. So we're gonna get these hooked up, bolted up, and then this whole assembly, after we hook up the wires, is going in the Bronco. We're on the home stretch, guys. All right, we've got two brackets. One is shorter, one is longer, and this longer one is where this dampening bushing slash bolt is going to go. So we're going to put that on there using one of our little 10 millimeters. And we'll see how well that tightens up on there. Okay, nice and tight. And then it says to put a zip tie through these little holes, just like, oh, almost just like that. And now we've got a little 15 millimeter bolt that we have to go undo and it will go right through here and it'll get mounted up just something like that. Okay, down here there is a shock tower mount bolt and a 15 millimeter nut. And so I'm gonna remove that 15 millimeter nut and then this whole bracket that we just put together is gonna slide over that bolt. We're gonna use the existing nut and bolt that down. And this is going to be one of the mounts for our compressor. Just like that, and then we'll reinstall the bolt, and the zip tie will go right around this cooling hose here. All right, before we put the compressor and PCM back into place, we're gonna make all the connections for the wires. So that wire for the button that we routed through, we're gonna go ahead and connect that guy right here. That just snaps right in, perfect. And then this is our power wire. It's gonna go all the way to the battery. So we've got two grounds and two powers. There's two fuses here as well. Come on. <clears throat> Snap in there. There we go. It didn't give me that satisfying click, but it's in there. Okay, we're good. All right, here we go. So this little tab right there on the bracket is gonna go on that little vibration dampening bushing that we just installed on top of that mount. Just gonna slide on there. Nice and easy, perfect. Keep an eye on my wire loom here, okay. And then over on this side, those three eight millimeter bolts and the ground wire we need to attach and that will give us support on the other side. But first I'm gonna install a little, little nut on there. All right, this part here, it's a pretty tight fit. There we go. Just need to get it started. All right, this bottom little eight millimeter, the truth is there's just no easy way to do it. You just gotta take your time, stick your fingers in there, use your wrench a little bit, 
just kind of work it. Eventually it'll get going. It took me a couple minutes, but we're almost, almost there. All right, now that this is in place, everything has gotten pretty tight. Uh, we need to get this bracket in here. And remember that long bolt that we left loose on the PCM? So that's gonna attach to this end, and then this end is going to brace itself on the fender well. There's a 10 millimeter bolt here, but I can barely get my hands in here, let alone the camera. So I'm just gonna get this installed, and then I will show you what it looks like all said and done. But basically, this bracket is just gonna give us a little more support and that'll be good to go. And then we can get this thing wired up and we'll see if we can inflate a tire with it. Okay, she's installed, she's ready to go. Now we just need to wire it up. Now, I mentioned it's a tight fit and it takes a little bit of patience to get that last bracket in there. And I did end up loosening these three eight millimeter bolts up here just to give it a little play, but it all came together. It fits in here nice and clean. I'm really happy with this. Let's get it wired up guys and let's see if she works. Okay, I spent a little bit of time putting some nice connectors on the end of the wires. I heat shrink them so they're super clean. I've attached them to the battery. Uh, I'm gonna go through and zip tie the actual main wire to the rear firewall just so it's nice and clean, but I'm excited to get this thing up and running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the Bronco because you don't wanna run this unless the vehicle is running because it just draws too much power. It'll be a, a big drain on your battery. So I'm gonna start the Bronco, hook up the uh, hose and uh, and let's see if we get some air out of this thing. There we go. There we go. Let's see if we can put some air in the tire. Well, I gotta say, I am very happy with that. That is a clean install. It's nice and tidy. It's gonna make it easy to finish the day on the trail, hook up and air up these tires. No more carrying around a portable air compressor. What a great setup. I will leave a link down below where you can go check out the Grim Off-Road mounting system and the ARB compressor. And if you are visiting this channel for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We've got all kinds of great Bronco and Jeep and other off-road and adventure content I think you guys will really enjoy. Thanks for hanging out with me in the garage today. We'll see you in the next video.